Thank you, Chairman, and uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. In a short time, I'll try to explain the Indian AWNC system in the global scenario. As you all know that the AWNC has got an advantage in the history of military warfare, victory always depended upon the early warning on the side, the deployment of the opponent side. Basically, in the early projects, if you happen to look at it, quite some time back, uh, a Chinese uh, kite developer had made a man-carrying kite, and then he has uh, used it, deployed it very effectively in Chu Chang War in 2003, 2000, uh, 203, 204 BC. Similar to that, there are several balloon projects have been there in the scenario and in the history. And all for to get a height advantage that thereby you can look into the enemy territory. Similar to that, we can always say that the Gulf War was won by the effective use of uh, AWNC aircraft, which is nothing but the A2C. It has provided several advantage in terms of battle management as well as the search and rescue operation, most importantly, aerospace management. Basically, it is an American all-weather system based on an aircraft carrier, and it is always uh, used right from 1973 onwards. The elder brother of the same could come out slightly later, that is in the 1977, which is known as uh, E3CFX, and it, as we all know that it is fitted onto the aircraft 707 Boeing, and it is used in several warfares. But now, the arrival or advent of uh, active electronically stayed array has given a way to this particular system. In other words, it's no longer uh, important or uh, useful. In other words, AWNC is going to be mostly based on a AESA. In, this is the technology which is going to have a lot of advantage. If you look at a typical uh, AWNC or the TR module, which is basic uh, ingredient of this, has got a path where, through which that you've got a small variable attenuator or an amplifier followed by a phase shifter, which has got a path to go through the power amplifier in the transmit path. Similarly, in the reception side, that you divert the energy through a protection circuit followed by a LNAR, a lone ice amplifier, maybe you make use of the same amplifier and followed by the uh, variable phase shifter combination to go, go back to the receiver. All that we have done is shifted this uh, um, basic uh, electronics, which is otherwise normally we generated the power in a huge quantity through a tube and then transmitted all the way at a huge loss. Instead, we have shifted the, uh, this module, the power amplifier module, very close to the array, and thereby we enjoyed the loss part of it as well as several other advantages, which I will narrate now. Now, one is that the radar itself could be built with a variable dwell. In other words, the time has become an additional factor. Earlier, when the mechanical scanning was used, we have got a fixed time on target. In the sense, the target will be there or not there. The beam cannot be sustained for a long period in, a, in space, whereas the variable dwell is one of the main importance. Thereby, we could optimally use or optimally energy management can be done. The other part of it is the agility of the beam. There is nothing called uh, revisit in the case of mechanical system, whereas in the electronically scanned arrays, we can always go back wherever you suspect. You can put back your verification beam and then get your conference level built. And last but not the least, you can have several types of waveforms which are fine-tuned for various environment. Could be air to air or air to sea, and then simultaneously operate them in this type of systems. Most importantly, from the system point of view, from the availability point of view, it's a graceful degradation. We have uh, no, sig no big uh, single transmitter, which is, of course, is a very important and critical system, but it is in the whole path that becomes a weak element. In case of failure of one transmitter, we have to shut down the show. Whereas in the case of uh, AESA type of uh, radars, that we have got a graceful degradation of the performance increase enormously. Most importantly, because we are going to keep these small, tiny transmitters very close to the array element itself, we come out of the loss, which could be as, as high as 3 to 4 dB in the ancient case, and then we, we have the much better efficient system. In a similar way, 
if you look at the first AWNC or the Airborne Early Warning System was done and utilized uh, by none other than Ericsson's of Sweden, and they used in their AWNC system uh, minimum things like, for instance, primary radar, IFF, and probably ESM, and some amount of communication. And they put this uh, system on top of the aircraft, call it as a pod, they call it as a dorsal, and uh, there is basically a rectangular equipment, rectangular, rectangular pod, which contains antenna on either side and the TR modules in the middle. And they also made use of the normally airflow, which is otherwise available freely for you, to use the cooling, use it as a cooling. Ericsson's radar is uh, used as a uh, first thing, and then it's, uh, it's also had S-band as a basic operational frequency. And they could cover up to in either side plus minus 120 degrees. In other words, you cannot get a 360 degrees, but you will get on the sides, both the sides. But this is uh, generally felt it's more than adequate because in general AWNCs are operated well inside the territory. That means about 100 kilometers inside when you are there, you approximately know where to look for, and thereby you can go parallel to the path or parallel to the region of interest. So thereby you can completely cover, and you make a turn after maybe about hundreds of kilometers journey, you make a quick turn and come back and see through the other side. This is the approach done by the Ericsson's. And they also gone ahead with put, putting the same system in uh, Brazilian's uh, Embraer 145 aircraft, and that is used very well by the, their uh, corresponding air forces in Brazil, Mexico, as well as in Greece. In all the cases, they used... 240 degrees total coverage as the issue. At, at, the, at this point of time, uh, Americans have uh, gone ahead with a, a program called Wedgetail for Australia, uh, mounting on a B 737 aircraft, a system which is called as a Wedgetail. Basically, they added additional antenna on top of the, the two side antennas, which gives a edge, edge or the uh, edge over the previous one. In other words, you can see both front and back. If not, the complete coverage, you will get a slightly reduced coverage. This also was uh, basically for 120 degrees, the additional 360 degrees could be achieved by a reduced, reduced uh, range. Last but not the least, and very importantly, Yelta, my colleague, is going to have a full presentation on this. Then formal AWNC from Israel, it came. And what they did is they put the same two antennas on either side of the aircraft, and put all the TR modules inside. And uh, after that, they could get, as usual, completely to 240 degrees on either side without any problem. They overcome the other issue of front and back by having a smaller S-band antennas in addition to the existing L-band antennas. But the most uh, important thing today, and it's the only thing